What up dudes, it's Mr Clay here with another biology podcast. Hope you're well. I keep sort of running short of time so I'm going to get stuck straight into it today. And this is the second part of the, of the second podcast that's about chromosome mutations. The last one was about the rearrangement of genes. There were a certain type of chromosome mutation that involves the rearrangement of genes. That was inversions, duplications, that sort of stuff. Today what we're going to look at is the number of chromosomes, so mutations that cause the number of chromosomes within a cell to actually change. So without further ado, let's get into some biology. So let's have a look at this in a human perspective then. So let's just refresh our minds and just pause me for a second and have a think about the number of chromosomes in a normal body cell. How many chromosomes are there in a normal human body cell? Okay, so you should have come up with the answer that there are 46 chromosomes in each body cell and there are 23 different types of chromosomes, so you have two pairs of each. And of course that's not the same for our sex cells or gametes, so how many uh, chromosomes do we have in a sex cell? Okay, well you should have come up with the answer of 23, and there are 23, in, uh, and in each sex cell there isn't a pair of each of the different types of chromosomes, there is just one of each different type. So in a body cell there are two of each type of chromosomes, there are two number ones, two number twos, two number threes, and so on, and in a body cell, sorry, in a gamete, a sex cell, you've just got one number one chromosome, one number two chromosome, and one number three chromosome, and so on. However, as I'm about to tell you, that's not always the case, because chromosome mutations can sometimes happen, which result in a cell actually having more than one of a particular chromosome, and that's what we're going to look at today. So there are two types of chromosome number mutations, and they're on your screen right now, and you'll see that the two names are aneuploidy and polyploidy. So very simply, aneuploidy is when a cell ends up, due to this type of mutation, ends up with an extra chromosome. So for example, we've talked about Down syndrome. That's a, a problem that's caused by aneuploidy, and that's when a cell has three copies of the number 21 chromosome. So that's aneuploidy when you get an extra chromosome or when you miss out a chromosome, so you only get one of a particular chromosome. Now polyploidy, the second one on there, is basically when you get an extra set of chromosomes. This is really rare that it will happen in an animal and the animal will survive. It's quite common in plants. Um, there are a few rare examples. There's a frog that's a polyploid, which is, means it has three copies of each of the um, of each chromosome, but generally it's something that happens in plants. So just to recap that, aneuploidy is when the cell ends up with an extra chromosome, and polyploidy is when the cell ends up with an extra set of chromosomes. So let's have a look at how that can actually happen then. Okay, so appearing on your screens right now is a really key term to all this, and that key term is non-disjunction. Okay, and that basically roughly means that when the chromosomes line up during meiosis, they aren't actually pulled apart. So that's what we're going to look at right now, what this non-disjunction means and how it can actually lead to aneuploidy and polyploidy. So on your screens right now you'll see an image of a cell and in that cell you've got the nucleus which is a circular part and then you've got uh, a, well, two pairs of chromosomes, you've got a number, two number ones and two number twos. So we can see on the screen now those chromosomes that at the minute just look like sort of single lines and they replicate and they become sort of like that X shape with a circle in the middle representing the centromere. So now each of the four different chromosomes has actually been copied so you've basically got sort of two copies of each one and they're held together in the middle with that little circle there, the centromere. Now do a bit of a sort of revision here. I want you to pause me and I want you to try and remember what happens next in meiosis. So that's the first, we're at the point where all the chromosomes have been copied, what's the next thing that happens? Okay, so I'm hoping you've sort of got this right, but if you're actually watching the video now, you'll see what happens there is those pairs, those copied chromosomes actually line up in the middle or across the equator of the cell, and then the spindle fibers join onto them and pull them apart. So you end up with two cells uh, with the nucleus there containing sort of half the genetic material, so one of the number ones and one of the number twos. And which number one they get and which number two they get depends on that process we call independent assortment which you might need to do a bit of reading on, um, but we'll maybe look at that in a little bit more detail next week. The crux of the matter is that the important part is you've now got two cells, and each of those cells has got half the genetic material. So once again, see if you can figure out what the next stage in meiosis is. What happens next? Okay, so I'm hoping that you can remember 
that this time what happens is the chromosomes don't line up in homologous pairs because they can't because there's only one number one and one number two so this time they line up against the, along the equator again the middle of the cell and, but they line up in single file so the number one at the top number two underneath and obviously if there was a human it would be going one two all the way down to 23 and once again the spindle fibers then attach to the centromeres of those chromosomes and then begin to pull them apart and you can see in the bottom of those two cells there that's happening nice and neatly and those chromosomes have been pulled apart so one of the chromatids like half the, the copied chromosome if you like is being pulled to the right hand side of the cell and the other one's been pulled to the left hand side of the cell however that's not the case in the top cell and that's where we've got this idea or this um, event occurring that we call non-disjunction so if you actually look at the very top of the image there you can see um, that the number one chromosome is at the top when the spindle fibers have tried to pull it apart they've failed and basically it's not been separated so both of those chromatids end up going to the right hand side of the cell so if we actually sort of just watch the rest of this clip here we'll notice that when the next division happens and you then end up with your four daughter cells of the product of meiosis you end up with two of those cells at the bottom being fine you've got sort of um, one number one one number two but the top two cells there we end up with the one on the left hand side being short of one chromosome so it's only got one chromosome instead of two and the one on the right hand side has three chromosomes so it's got an extra chromosome so it's got three instead of two and that's an example of aneuploidy so that's when a cell ends up with more like an extra chromosome or it ends up short of one chromosome and non-disjunction there is that process where the chromosome wasn't separated during that second division in meiosis so it ends up with an extra one or ends up short of one now let's relate that back now to this idea of Down syndrome so we've already talked a little bit about it in class but we've, we can say that Down syndrome is actually caused by something called trisomy 21 and what that means is when the chromosomes are lining up just like you've seen on the video there the 21st chromosome non-disjunction happens so the gametes that are produced you end up with one gamete that's actually got two copies of the 21st chromosome and when that fuses with a normal egg what you end up with is a cell that's got three number 21 chromosomes and two of all the other chromosomes just as usual and what we call it that is we call it trisomy because tri meaning three and it has three of the chromosomes trisomy and that's the most common cause of Down syndrome and the reason for that is that basically you've got an extra set of genes so you've got three sets of those genes instead of just two so you've got a different level of protein being produced so more proteins being produced and, and other things as well that actually upsets the balance within the nucleus and within the cell or the cells and yeah basically leads to all those different phenotype that are associated with Down syndrome such as the physical appearance um, and you know potential um, psychological issues as well in terms of learning difficulties and things like that are basically all those phenotypes are all as a result of trisomy 21 the, the fact that the cells of an individual with Down syndrome have three copies of the third oh, sorry of the 21st chromosome rather than just two so I'm hoping that aneuploidy is pretty clear there and this idea of non-disjunction being the key word there that causes aneuploidy so let's have a quick look at the second of those two chrom chromosome number mutations that can happen and that's polyploidy and this is really simple to get if you understand the aneuploidy bit you'll understand the polyploidy bit no problem see if you can actually think for yourself what actually happens in polyploidy knowing what happens in aneuploidy you might be able to put two and two together and actually come up with a reasonable conclusion yourself so pause me for a second and have a think. Okay, so I'm going to use the video again to explain this, but on the video you can see what we've just been watching before. We've got that non-disjunction occurring at the top with chromosome number one in the picture, and which is ultimately resulting in the cell at the top right there ending up, or the gamete at the top right ending up with three chromosomes instead of the usual two chromosomes. Well, now I want you to imagine if that happens to every chromosome that's lining up during that second meiotic division. So non-disjunctional fibers, which mean that all the chromosomes in one of those divisions end up in one cell, and none of the chromosomes in the other end up in the other cell. So if that image that you see in there was um, polyploidy, you'd end up with the cell on the top right having a diploid number, the gamete having a diploid number, and then one of the cells having none at all. So if that was a human, you'd have a human gamete with 46 chromosomes, and another gamete that was produced with zero. And we're not going to worry about that too much right now, but you just need to know that doesn't happen very often in animals. It's, it would be completely lethal if it did. However, it's really common in plants.
but there's a 10 minutes, so keep it real and I'll see you soon.